wage, a single payer health care system, it's failed to repeal the Patriot Act, the Secret Evidence Act, the Military Commissions Act, failed to repeal the Bush tax cuts, and in fact, um, the hallmark of the Democratic majority in Congress is failure. And therefore, when I took a, an inventory of my values, alongside the values of the policies that were being implemented, uh, in Washington, D.C., it was very clear that the Democratic Party no longer reflected my values, and so I decided to do something that um, I hope other people will follow suit as well. And I declared my independence from the national leadership that had made our country so complicit in crimes against humanity, crimes against peace, crimes against the global community, and crimes against the American people. Now, define uh, victory in this election in your candidacy. What does victory mean for the Green Party and how do you uh, propose to achieve it? I think uh, you're absolutely right that we define for ourselves what victory is. And for us, uh, getting the word out about alternatives, and as my running mate Rosa Clemente stated, the Green Party is not an alternative party. The Green Party is the imperative party. This country does not have an opposition party in it any longer if it ever did. And so now what we are sure of is that the American people do not feel confident that the two corporate parties that are being touted so well by the corporate media actually reflect what they want for their country. That's why 85% of people when poll said that they know that this country is on the wrong track. What we need is a different set of values making public policy in this country. And I believe that the, the values of the Green Party are reflected for the majority of the people in this country. You talked about values, but can you talk about issues that define your candidacy away from the two parties? Well, of course, we already mentioned the livable wage, single payer health care system, a Medicare for all type of uh, delivery system. Of course, the Congress has voted to spend $720 million every day for war and occupation. That's above the one half trillion dollars that the, that the Pentagon gets in so-called defense spending. And so consequently, we are seeing more and more of hard-earned tax dollars being sucked into a war and military industrial uh, complex that does not serve the aims, objectives, and ends and interests of the people of this country. So of course, we want to see an end to militarization, of uh, U.S. Uh, policy. We want to see uh, a restoration of the Bill of Rights. We want to see a rollback of those infringements. As I said, the Patriot Act, the Secret Evidence Act, the Military Commissions Act. And we could go on. We want to see an end to the drug war. We want to uh, see an end to the private operation over our U.S. currency, as it is now with the Federal Reserve. Most people don't even know that the Federal Reserve isn't federal at all private. Uh, we would like to see an end to the drug war, an end to prisons for profit. We also are not afraid to talk about race and gender in this country. And we understand the Green Party took as its uh, uh, 2004 platform position uh, the fact that this country was built on genocide of indigenous people. And we think it's outrageous that the United States didn't support the United Nations Declaration on, Indi on Indigenous Rights. The fact that this country was also, the economic foundation of this country was, was uh, based on the enslavement of Africans. And so the 2004 Green Party platform discusses the facts about reparations. And of course, we know that the two corporate parties and the two presumptive nominees have said that reparations is not something to be discussed. The status of women in this country um, is something that also needs to be discussed and it's definitely something more than uh, cleavage and whether or not a woman wears a, a skirt when she is campaigning for uh, public office. The fact of the matter is that women wake up every morning and they go to work equally equipped as their male work counterparts and yet at the end of the month they bring home less money. We need to talk about that. We understand that it took 72 years when women and men together decided that they were going to declare their independence from the current political order that denied women the right to vote, it took 72 years for that to be accomplished. So what we are hoping 
to kickstart in this country is not only that the Green Party becomes the opposition party, but that the Green Party becomes the vanguard of the movement for justice that this country so desperately needs. You mentioned Rosa Clemente. Um, Obama picked Biden earlier this uh, weekend, or today rather. Um, talk about why you picked Clemente and what you think of uh, Biden as Obama's choice. Well, Joe Biden represents more of the same, so that's certainly not changed. Um, and it doesn't give me hope. He's gone along to get along with the status quo politics in Washington, D.C. that have led to the current situation that we're facing now. So uh, on the other hand, we have this young, dynamic, Afro-Latina, Puerto Rican, Barico, a woman who is uh, from right on. the yes. Bronx with it. The founding of the whole hip hop culture started now. I know Brooklyn has something to say about that. <laughs> but um, here we have Rosa Clemente, an activist who at the same time is a, a scholar, a journalist, and a, a mover and shaker within the hip hop world. So I'm very, very proud to be able to uh, wrap my arms of mentoring around a young woman who definitely has leadership qualities and the only thing I can say is thank you to the Green Party. Thank you to the visionaries of the Green Party who 20 years ago decided that they were going to be willing to step outside of the two-party box. And that box represents behavior control and thought control. That they were going to create a new agenda and a new paradigm for this country. And that new agenda and that new paradigm now welcomes Rosa and me. It's a wonderful thing, and I thank the members of the Green Party for doing so. Um, how do you seek to redefine sources of electoral power come November? My political career, I started um, in the state of Georgia as a member of the Georgia legislature. When I ran for that particular position, the Corporate press all touted the fact that I was not going to win. And yet we were able to win. We won because of people power. We went outside of the existing electorate. We brought new people in. And that is, of course, one of the hopes that we have with this campaign, is that we're going to bring new people into the political process and let them see the efficacy of their vote. Now, how is it that we can do that, though? We have to talk about the fact that we are operating in a political environment that lacks election integrity. And so one of the things that I've been able to say uh, quite convincingly because of the precedent that was set four years ago by the Green Party and David Cobb was that the day after the election, when there are reports of disfranchisement and uh, fraud the Green Party is going to be there when the Democratic Party capitulates. Because it was in 2000 that we know that the voters of this country gave the Democrats the White House. And instead, they didn't even fight for the victory that the voters gave them. They, they capitulated to the Republicans and allowed George W. Bush to assume the presidency. And then again in 2004, John Kerry promised we will not see this kind of action on behalf of the Democratic Party that took place in 2000. And then in 2004, on the very next day, even as the reports were coming in from Ohio, John Kerry conceded. He gave up once again. Gave up the White House so that George W. Bush could continue this reign of terror on people inside this country and on people outside of this country as well. So now comes 2008. We understand that there are efforts already under, uh, afoot to disfranchise certain populations through the voter ID laws that have been passed in various legislatures, as well as with voter caging. Voter caging is just a fancy way of saying you show up at the polls on election day and you find out that your name isn't on the voter list. What is your recourse? You have none. You don't get to vote. If you have the opportunity to cast a provisional ballot, there's no guarantee that the provisional ballot will be counted. We still have to deal with the electronic voting machines. So the ills of the 2000 election remain with us. 
the ills of the 2004 election remain with us. New ills have been placed on top of those ills for the 2008 election, and it will be the Green Party and activists across this country who will demand election integrity and who will move from protest to resistance. That is what we have to do now. As members of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union did on May 1st of this year, when every port on the west coast of this country was shut down for 24 hours, including the five busiest ports in this country, shut down. And the president of that union said, we have moved from protest to resistance. Now I'm headed to Denver for the purpose of protest, but I will not hesitate to also be involved in resistance. I think my country is worth it. You mentioned protest, and this is my last question since I know we're on a tight time, uh, time schedule. The final vote for McKinney in 2008, is it a protest vote or is it more substantive than that? It's a values vote. And what we're asking people to do is to vote their values. I am so proud to say that at a recent meeting with Roseanne Barr, she said, I'm sick and tired of being put in a box. I'm going to vote my values. I'm going to vote green. We would invite people to join the Power to the People campaign this is a campaign that seeks to include everyone. We want to draw from every, every population that feels that somehow their values are not represented by the powers that be. They are not represented by the two corporate parties. They're not represented in any other way, shape, fashion, or form. But that perhaps the Power to the People campaign and the Green Party can express the views and the values of people who want peace for a change. They want ecological wisdom for a change. They want social justice for a change. They want real democracy for a change. That's what the Green Party vote represents. And so I invite everyone to vote your values and vote green. www.runsintheorun.org. <laughs> Oh, you've done this before. <laughs> Did you meet Tom last? He's running for Congress in the 46th district. need to get you inside now. Okay. Sanders? Yeah. I've talked to several people.